Hey there folks, so let's talk about the uh, GBX cart RW and uh, the jig I made for cutting a shelf for these things. Uh, so these cart readers from Inside Gadgets here, which by the way, of, of all of the cart readers right now, this is probably one of my favorites, but um, these cart readers are intended to be slotted inside of a... Uh, Game Boy Advance cartridge housing um, so that you're not just handling a bare PCB whenever you get one of these things, but these things don't come with housing. So when, when you buy them, it's just the bare PCB, you know, you, you plug it in, you do your, um, your cart things and that's it. It's, it's fine. Like you don't need a housing. It's just, it's designed in this shape to give you an easier housing. But anyway, um, rambling. Let's talk about the housings for these things. Uh, so unfortunately there isn't really an off the shelf option. If you want a GBX cart and housing, um, there are, you know, obviously it's designed for the Game Boy Advance casing, uh, cartridge casing, but you know, there are like 3D printed options if you just want to have your own, your own whole thing 3D printed. I think like Retromodding sells this uh, like laser cut acrylic transparent one. Um, I think the bottom's a 3D print and there's a laser cut acrylic that slides in or something like that. It, it It's pretty decent, but you know, that's, that's besides the point. There are, you know, other alternatives or there will be eventually, but that's... For another time, I suppose. Um, so this housing, I used aftermarket, generic aftermarket um, cart shell housings for these things, and then I made my own jig so that you can more easily cut out ports for these things, and I never actually gave any instruction on how to use the jig. I thought it was a little self-explanatory, but we'll walk over that now. Um, so at the time when I made this jig, there were three options, the generic aftermarket cart shells, OEM cart shells, and then the uh, Crix cart shells here. That's, that's all there was. There's also like the full transparent and, you know, there's different colors of this cart shell, but there weren't, you know, they, it, it was all the same mold really. But now there are, there's one more new mold here. Um, this is cart shell from Cloud Game Store, and things are a little bit different with this cart shell. So with the Crix cart shells, of course, the ones that are intended for an EverDrive have EverDrive branding on them, um, but the non-EverDrive intended versions should still be the same. The outer mold is basically the same, aside from the lack of EverDrive mold branding, uh, but there's also no cutout for the SD card slot. Um, but otherwise, these are identical to the EverDrive shells. They're missing these little shoulders that OEM and replacements have, um, but they work all the same, including with the jig. It just kind of snaps in there, and then you can cut out your porthole, and it just works all the same. It's kind of great. Let us tear this thing apart. Um, the other option is, of course, the generic aftermarket cart shells, which is what I've got mine stuck down in. Uh, sorry, I forgot that was taped down. You don't have to, I just did. I don't remember if that was for rattle reasons or something else, but um, of course there are the aftermarket cart shells. It's all the same thing, you know. You take the bottom half, you snap it into the jig, and then you can... Uh... There we go. And then you can carve out your uh, porthole there. And then the uh, last choice here are the OEM cart shells. I don't recommend these. Yeah, yeah, highest quality plastics, blah, blah, blah. But these require a little bit more modification than the other shells. So OEM cart shells have these little um, features inside, these, these notches, these ridges here that are intended to interface with OEM games and hold them in place, uh, specifically if, if it's a game that does not take up the entire vertical height of the cart shell, which most don't. Pokemon do, but 
most other carts don't. <laughs> um, anyway, aftermarket cart shells don't have this. So if you wanted to reshell your OEM game into the aftermarket cart shells, well, you'd probably want to tape it around because there's nothing, there's nothing to hold this in. But there is a point to all of this. The um, GBX cart was designed for aftermarket shells that do not have that in there. So if you wanted to use an OEM cart shell, you'd have to cut out these two notches and you'd likely have to cut out two more notches up at the top here. You've got this one right here on the right and then this one on the left. You can, uh, you can try dry fitting the board in there and it should actually fit um, once you've got everything cut out, even if you don't have the porthole cut out yet. Um, so of course start with these two notches and then test fit and so on and so forth. That's kind of that's kind of the theme with a lot of Game Boy modding is um, whenever you have to cut something up, just cut a little bit, check and see if it fits, and then keep cutting until it does. Um, something something. Measure twice, cut once. I don't know. I don't like that. I, I like just cut it until it fits. <laughs> um, but anyway. The whole point of this video, let's talk about the Jig and the Cloud Game Store cart shells. So I'm going to go ahead and put all of these here. Um, oh, actually, before moving on to the GBX, um, the CGS cart shell, rather, uh, one more thing I want to mention. There are several hardware variations of the GBX cart out in the wild. Um, if you have an older model, like I do, right here, this is the V1.3, I believe it is. We'll find out in just a second. Yeah, this is the V1.3 Pro. All of the Pro models should use this sort of form factor where they fit into these cart shells. Um, the non-Pro models, which have since been discontinued, are, they, they just used a generic rectangular PCB about this size, and I think Inside Gadgets just, just discontinued them because there was no point in having two products that were effectively the same, but, you know, you gotta order two different sets of PCBs, blah, blah, blah. It's all the same parts. But anyway, um, if you have one of the older models with the larger AT Mega based CPU, um, the port is in a very ever so slightly different location, so there is a different jig for that. If you do not already have one of these, you're not gonna buy one because they've been discontinued a long time ago, um, you likely are gonna get one of the 1.4 variants or newer. As of the, the time of film in this video, 1.4 is still the newest, but there's, I believe, a 1.4A with, um, an RGB LED instead of three discrete LEDs, and I don't know, there might be a B by now, I don't know. Um, it's all largely the same though, it doesn't, doesn't matter too much. This should work for all, this should work for all V1.4 variations. All right, so first thing, let me get this apart here. Like the generic aftermarket shells, the Cloud Game Store shells also do not have these uh, notches in the sides here, which means it should be just about identical to our generic aftermarket. But the dimensions are tweaked just a little bit, and the GB, I, I mean, it kind of sort of fits. Like, you can jam it in there, but it's not, it's not a very pleasant experience. It also doesn't help that mine has tape on the back, um, which is why I was getting jammed in there, but, um, but it's okay. So we're going to modify this to fit anyway. We still got to cut out two different things here. First thing I'm going to do is I want to cut the hole for the port. Um, so I'm just going to set aside everything aside from the bottom half of the shell and the um, jig here. So this junk over here. And now I need my crappy little Harbor Freight file set. And I need two files here. I don't know. I think they sell a version of this set at Harbor Freight still for like $1.50 just without these plastic handles and files. And it's fine. I think this one was like six bucks. The, 
This is absurdly inexpensive for how much utility it provides. I highly recommend getting a hand file set. But anyway, um, the whole point of this is, well, we're, we're just gonna file this out slowly. Um, I had envisioned this, you know, you just pop it into the jig, the jig's effectively disposable, and, and you just file to your heart's content. But I suppose if one wanted to, they could very easily just um, use the jig for marking up the shell and then cut by hand. Doesn't really matter that much. Um, I'm gonna put some tape here. This is just to protect the shell while I'm cutting and nothing else. If you don't have a jig, of course, you can always just dry fit the board and on clear housings, you could just see the outline of the port, you know, you, you color that in or something and then file out everything that's colored in. Um, and shoot, even if it's not clear, I mean, you can clearly see where the port goes from the top, so I don't know. It's really not too bad to um, freehand if you want to give it a shot. But the whole reason for this tape here is while I'm filing, chances are very good I'm going to accidentally come at this from an angle like this. And I don't want to gouge the tip of my file into the back of this clear shell. So that's that's the whole reason for this tape. But otherwise, I'm just going to sit here and generate microplastics until I have this whole thing filed away. So I will be right back. All right, so I did the bulk of the filing with the uh, round file here, and that got me my left and right side. Now I'm gonna come back with the flat file along the bottom so that I have an actual flat surface in my cutout here. It's very hard to file a flat line with a round file, but I don't know. Not too bad. I think I still need to hit that and refine it with the round file, but I don't know. That looks about right. I want to not aerosolize this powdered plastic, but I think that's just going to happen. All right, and we can clean up some of this flashing here with a knife. Come in here, break the edges with my extraordinarily dull box cutter. It is time for a new blade. That's not too bad. Now, I'm gonna put this shilly thing in here. It mostly lines up. It's pretty good. I still need to cut a little bit more, but it's almost there. Okay, problem the second. We're gonna resolve this one right now. This is not something that I have seen on other shells, so I don't know if it's a problem with the most recent batch or, or something to do with the inside gadgets um, footprint cutout, but I'm guessing this is just a little bit oversized. So I'm gonna take off just a little bit at the edges here. So I'm filing not on this outer step, not on this inner step, but this short middle step. I'm just bringing that a little bit closer. 
There's no traces in the way. Not gonna damage anything. Fun fact, this is even worse to breathe in than the uh, plastic dust I just generated. I'm gonna do both sides. And ah, oh, now there's dust all over my tape. I'm gonna have to replace it. But now you notice that fits in nice and flat. I don't have to keep stressing the case around and stretching it out. Um, something about the way these inside lower notches come up and, and meet the PCB, I don't know what it is. I don't know if the radius on those cuts is just not tight enough, but I took off just a little bit of material, just, just a teeny weeny bit. All right. Now that I'm looking at it, I can see I definitely need to cut more out on this side, though. So I'm going to drop that back in there, that back in there, and then just keep cutting. And I can tell I'm cutting into my jig because my dust is turning red instead of just clear and white. So I could just slow down and look at the wear on my, my jig, but that's okay. It's meant to be disposable. I think that's pretty much it. I think we're good, at least with the bottom half. Peel this off. All that poor dust. That's okay. One thing I actually saw someone else do, um, this Velcro here is just because I have this thing stuck to the side of my workbench. It's actually super convenient. Um, totally forgot, totally lost my train of thought there. That's okay. Let's clean up. Bonus use of my masking tape picks up dust. Okay, it's not all of it, but it's good enough for now. Now we need to move on to the top of the shell. So on the top of the shell, we have two cutting operations. Uh, we can do one or the other or both, but we at least need to cut the port because there's a little bit of plastic that hangs down from the top that will otherwise cover the port. Uh, this one we don't really need a jig for. Um, like you, you, you can just eyeball it and it'll be fine because if you cut too much, it's not gonna show. Uh, the only real thing is you also want to mask this with uh, tape so that if you're using files to trim this, you don't screw up the finish on the shell. Which, I guess it's only really an issue for clear ones, but nonetheless. Okay. And then the second cut we can do is if you want to have a physical button on your shell, which you need this button to um, update it. You need physical access to this button to update your GBX because to update it, you have to hold this button down and then plug it in. Uh, however, all this button does is it activates the um, soft, what do we call this? Uh, it's basically the cartridge eject feature um, you, you can click disconnect in the Flash GBX software, or you can click this button here, and all it does is it switches the GBX cart off while it's still plugged in so that you can remove your carts without worrying about hot swapping them and accidentally deleting saves. Um, 
but you can do that in software, it doesn't matter. Uh, my jig here, if you would like to cut that hole, you drop the front of the shell into the jig. Um, same orientation as the back shell. So we had the back shell with the bottom facing the bottom of the jig. Same thing with the top shell. We have the bottom facing the bottom of the jig. The screw post goes down. And then you can flip this bad boy over and then drill through the hole in the jig to uh, get a little hole in the front of your shell exactly where that button is uh, supposed to be. Yeah, okay, there we go. I, I accidentally flipped the jig, see? Um, double check before you, you drill anything out, of course. Um, yeah, I had that right. You just drop it into the jig, uh, top facing out, and then flip the whole thing over and then drill through the hole on the bottom. It's, it's kind of loosey-goosey. It'll kind of move around on you, so, you know, be careful. Make sure, make sure you have your work holdings set up sufficiently so that this doesn't slip around. Um, it is just plastic and plastic, so of course you can just hold it and drill through it, but I really don't recommend doing that. Um, the hole should be right about on the line of the sticker cutout and the front of the shell there. Um, but my button here is literally just a GBA as piece uh, screw that I flipped upside down. On the bottom, there's a little bit of a 3D printed screw post there that I threaded all the way on as a little spacer stopgap. And then on the top is the rest of that 3D printed screw post, just as something to, you know, make the button captive and give me something to actually interface with that isn't bare screw threads, but I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Let me do this here. I am going to mark this up. And actually, I'm kind of tempted to just hit it with flush cutters. I think that'll work even better. We just need to clear the port. You know, let's use flush cutters. That's even easier. Way less risk to my lung health as well. That's what we gotta be careful with though. It's very easy with flush cutters to cause stress fractures in here. Also, that doesn't really work. Um, I think I'd need to clean this up with a knoif here and yeah. This one's dull enough that I'm kind of nervous doing that, so I'll just finish it with the file. It needs to be flush. Or not flush, but, you know, not proud. I figure if it's flush with the tape, that's more than flush enough. <laughs> be careful of the angle of your um, tool here you need to make it as parallel with the shell as possible otherwise you're going to be cutting towards the outside in a not so great way but otherwise that's it Bob Gianti it's all nice and set Mine's angled kind of funny because it's taped in, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, and then we just need the uh, screw. And just like that, we're all done.
I am not gonna bother cutting a hole for the um, screw, for the button rather. I don't think I need it. Um, me, in particular, I do actually use it a lot, but I also just have a separate GBX with a button on it, so I'll just use that one. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, outside of my particular specific use case, most people don't really use the button that much. You know, you just, you plug it in, you, you mess with the cart that you were messing with, and then you're done. It's kind of it. I, on the other hand, flashed like 300 some odd cartridges with the other one because I was building flash carts with it. So it made sense for me to have the button because it worked better with my workflow. But I don't need it. Anyway, that's about that. Um, I like it. I think it's pretty good. I really like the, um, the casing. I think it's super, uh, I think it's creative. I think it's a good use of parts that basically all of us are going to have lying around. You know, if you have any vague interest in modifying Game Boys and, and modifying Game Boy hardware, chances are pretty good. You at least have some of these empty shells laying around or... You know, maybe a bootleg or two that you're not really using. Pull the shell from that. Um, I don't know. It seem, seems easy enough. And then, I guess if you want, you can go ahead and throw a sticker on this bad boy. But I don't really have any stickers handy to throw on here. Aside from uh, this one, I guess. Oh, you don't want to focus, do you? That's cool. Yeah, there you go. Focus on that. But yeah, easy peasy. I like it. I'm into it. Um, I am 100% sure this is going to come up, so I'm going to cover it now, even though it kind of doesn't have that much to do with the video. But, um, yes, I am aware that there are other cart readers out there. Uh, some of them even come with their own cases, and it's pretty nice. Like, for example, we have Epilogues, GB thing. Um, totally forget the name of it. It's not the GB01, that's the other one. Uh, GB Operator, this thing. I was thinking of this one. But the GB Operator does indeed come with its own case if you want. Um, but hardware-wise, these are effectively the same thing. Um, the only difference really is the software and the support that you get with them. I personally don't care for this thing because the compatibility kind of sucks and the support is basically non-existent. But... Um, in all fairness, I haven't actually reached out to them for anything, so I don't know if me saying their support is non-existent is, is exactly a fair statement. Um, but I don't know. Sure, it's a thing. If you like it, fine. But this is objectively a better card reader. And before you, you cite the dark magic to me, um, I was there when it was written. The biggest claim to fame that this thing has, um, that I see most people referencing at the very least, is that you plug your games into it, and then you can just boot them in an emulator on the computer. This thing supports that too. It's it, there's there's multiple softwares that are made for this. Uh, so the most common software, Flash GBX from Lesser Kuma, doesn't support that but you just plug your games and dump them and then boot them in an emulator. Uh, there's software distributed by Inside Gadgets, however, that does support that. You just plug it in and it boots it right into an emulator. Uh, you have to install the emulator separately, but it is, from what I hear, relatively painless to set up. Um, I like it. I think it's, I think it's the, the, the best subjective cart reader. Uh, the compatibility is better than every other cart reader I've tested, and... 
I have tested <laughs> as many as I can get my hands on, right? Like, have you even seen this one before? Probably not. Can't even see it now. You know, I I have a lot of I have a lot of cart readers. I don't know why. In 2021, these people are still putting USB Type B ports on things. That's kind of ridiculous, but whatever. That's besides the point. I like cart readers. I like the GBX cart reader. Um, I will go ahead and throw some links down in the description. I will first of all link to my jig if you wanna cut cut up your own shells for your GBX carts. I will of course link to where you can get your own GBX cart if you like. Um, but otherwise, these are just these are genuinely good readers. I really like how compact they are. I like how inexpensive they are. Um, I like that every time a new flash cart comes out these things either just work with them already or the software is made compatible and then an update is available for this thing to work with them, usually within, um, I mean, sometimes hours, but I, I have yet to see anything take longer than a week. <laughs> it's, it's pretty neat. These things supported the funny playing flash cards like the um, Game Boy and Game Boy Advance ones. Uh, and of course, I don't have that, any of them handy. Why would I? Oh, wait, they're right here. These things. This cart reader supported these flash carts like a full year before these flash carts were even made. So I think that was pretty neat. Other cart readers had to add in support after the fact. Um, I believe they've released a patch that actually labels them now, so they actually say funny playing flash card when you plug it in. But anyway, that I'm, I'm, I'm rambling now. So um, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. Any questions, please hit me up in the comments on the YouTube video or the printables page. Warning though, I don't really check my emails for printables. So if you are leaving comments there, I'm probably not seeing them in a timely manner. Uh, whereas I do check all of my YouTube comments. I don't necessarily reply to all of them, but I do read all of them. And I try to at least give you some sort of acknowledgement on that, you know, whether I hit the little stupid creator heart button or, you know, I give you an actual reply. But I do try and read all of them. So if there's any, um, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. I'll try and respond as soon as I am able, or maybe someone, some other knowledgeable person in the community might be able to step in for me. Um, if you have any feedback, you know, anything you'd like to see changed with this jig, well, quite frankly, I probably won't do it unless it's really easy. Like, I'm just being honest here. Um, but, you know, if I'm into it, if you can sell me on it, I'll, 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 I'll gladly make changes. Uh, but anyway, this is free for anyone to use. My only stipulation is that I don't want you to take my hard work and make money off of it um, for free. Like, that. That. that's it. You can use these as you want for any personal projects, you know, I, I want anyone to be able to print one of these bad boys out and make their own casing for their um, GBX cart RW. What I don't want is for some vendor uh, to come along, see my, you know, free 3D model and start, you know, printing these things in bulk to sell. Like, that's shame on you. You know who you are, but shame on you. Um... If you're listening to this, I, I haven't actually seen anyone selling these, but I have seen people selling my 3D prints before, and I don't, I don't like that. That's no bueno. Look, I don't bite much. Just, just reach out. Like it's, we we can work something out. It's okay. Um, just talk to me. It's okay. Trust me. We'll be good. Um, otherwise, I think that's all I've got. Uh, oh, I'll link to these cart shells if you want them. I. I genuinely do jig, dig this sparkly Esketit here, aesthetic. When I saw them come out, I, I bought one in each color, the, the Game Boy style, the Game Boy Color style, and the Game Boy Advance style, of course. I had no idea what I was gonna do with the Game Boy Advance one until this video, though, so that worked out nicely. <laughs> um, anyway, 
I'll find something else to ramble about. So I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching.